365. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you guys are doing well and welcome to another Trader's War Room, right? Trader's War Room is where I give you guys some signals, sell setups, buy setups in accordance to supply and demand, smart money concepts, and sometimes when there's time, we look at institutional order flows like COT data just to give us that um, incredible um, um, compounded analysis that allows us to make you know as many accurate trade calls as possible and if you've been following me long enough you will know that the stuff that we do here works well ladies and gentlemen i've just come out from a five-day break in the markets um, um, um so not this past week but the week before that i closed all my nasdaq sales s p 500 sales uh, uh, uh all my tesla buys russell 2000 sales um, there were probably a couple of, lot of trades that came together. And because of that, I got to a specific number. When I get to that number, I know it is time for me to take a break from trading to prevent me making stupid mistakes and giving away um, all those gains. And so that's what happened for the last five days. I've really tried to avoid anything to do with the markets, really not kind of like being active in any of the groups in case I fall for the temptation um, 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 to, to, to actually trade. And that's the whole point. It's called being in a state of euphoria and acknowledging that about yourself and making good decisions. And I, honestly, it was the best week of my life. Um, uh, my little one is sick. So everyone just got kind of like got the flu. I started getting sick on Friday and I can tell it's starting to take over. So this might be a short forum today. I, I do apologize. I will be back active this week in the public space. Uh, we'll be taking some, some trade calls, but I want us to talk about a couple of things first, guys. I want us to understand, you know, how far we've come and why we are where we are and, and really what it means to be a 365 trader or rather a supply and demand trader. And I, I want us to look at where markets are going, right? And this is all before um, um, I, I kind of like start dropping signals and it's kind of like, it's very important we address this upfront, right? I'm not gonna do the whole, I was right, I've been right, blah, blah, blah. If you know it, just go through the channel. All these trade calls, the long-term trades we've been calling are happening. But a couple of significant things have happened in the last few days. And I'm talking specifically Thursday, Friday was such a key moment in the markets. And if you're not paying attention, you would have missed it. You would have missed out true, full market investor capitulation. Okay, what that means basically, and I told on capitulation in February, I brought it back up again in March, and I'm bringing it up again now because full market convicting capitulation has occurred. And maybe before we get down to the to, 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 to all this kind of stuff. Let's just quickly look at the NASDAQ 100. This is the chart I want you to have inside your mind. It's a popular uh, a retail traders chart. Retail traders love the NASDAQ 100. So I will apologize for all these lines. Maybe I can find a cleaner. No, actually I won't, right? I mean, you just, just ignore the red lines, right? I'm gonna go to the weekly time frame. I'm gonna go to the weekly time frame on the NASDAQ. And then we're gonna we're gonna do some simple maths, all right? So I've got a seven year old and I'm teaching him how to trade. I've brought this up many times. And we did some simple maths uh, yesterday, Saturday, when I was kind of like reviewing my trading journal and seeing where I stand, you know, and how much capital I need to put back in, how much did I withdraw, blah, blah, blah. And we had a look at this, look at this. One red candle, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Is that correct? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've had seven red weeks, right, in the markets. Absolutely annihilation, plus this weird candle here, which is normally counted as week one of the complete downfall because this is a rejection candle, right? And it was within a supply zone. Seven to eight straight weeks of market dumping, right? And, and, and I want you to hear this. There are some of you watching this video today who were trying to buy. You've been trying to buy despite this type of structure in front of you. The question isn't whether you made $10 or $50 risking $100 or whether you blew or not. I'm not even going to address the crazy stuff up behind buying or selling because it's simply 3.30 p.m. I want you to introspect. You've been trying to buy when markets have been looking like this for seven to eight weeks. What's the problem? The problem is your perception 
of market is completely off. And I really want to encourage that you abandon a perspective of the market that will encourage more losses than profits. Some of you were in buys for a few minutes to seconds to hours before you lost it all. Some of you closed and made a little bit of money in those buys, but come the next day you try to do it again, you lost all that little bit money and then some. And it is because of a, a just, I'm just saying like my seven year old understands, okay, dad, this is the top here, markets drop. When markets drop, this was the point that we're looking at. That the, 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 the much recovery that I spoke about. Since then, markets have created an even lower low, right? This is basic ABC market structure. Why are we so hell bent on buying, right? It's just poor perspective on markets, which is something that we try to deal with in our trading course. If you don't know, if you're even not a part of our trading course, please join. Be a part of that because 1st of June, it's game over, right? So a lot of things are coming to change. Even the channel is going to be changing from the 1st of June. Um, and, and, and I'll announce those changes later. We're going to have a midweek crypto war room, right? Because, you know, this is the time to really get, you know, invested in other alternatives. Uh, and also for those of us who've been holding crypto for a very long time and are currently seeing unrealized losses, right? In this crypto bear market, I'll be teaching people how to simply hedge. You hedge by simply trading. Right. So if you're holding Bitcoin and other coins, go to your brokers and sell. Be on the right side of trades and make that money. Make that money dollar cost average to assets that you believe in. You repeat this cycle equals wealthy in three years. Simple math. Right. But but, but I'm going to make space in the channel to kind of like develop that narrative and actually run a program behind it. Now, let's talk about this. Right. So so so. We have a plethora of issues in the markets which are properly covered. I'm not going to get into that. What I will say is we're now in the fifth month of pain. We're in the month of May and we are in officially in the fifth month of pain. That's number one. You really have to know this. Some of you who are retail traders, you don't know what pain I'm talking about because you're most likely not invested, right? So if you're not invested in the markets and there's no pain. For those of you who've been holding crypto, you are in pain. For those of you who've been holding stocks, you are in pain. For those of you who've been spreading yourself across index baskets to stuff like easy equities, you are in pain. We're in our fifth month of pain as investors. And our fifth beautiful month of selling, if you're a 365 trader, and you, you actually fall in what's going on. We are now have seen eight consecutive weekly losses. Eight consecutive weekly losses right in the market space and i say remember just just use nasdaq the, the, the weekly time frame that i showed you but there's more there are a lot of more charts that look like that us 30 sp 500 the russell 2000 nikki j225 uh the china 50 across the board globally the jobex stock exchange i made a a Facebook post sometime last week on my private Facebook page about the Jobex Stock Exchange. It doesn't really matter what market you're in. We're in our eighth consecutive loss, right? Eight consecutive losses. And the last time with something crazy like that, run about 1923, which actually led to a steep recovery, very sharp recovery before the Great Depression annihilation of 1929. And I've covered this stuff on the channel in, 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 in little in bits and graphs, right? A good video to watch on the channel is the one where we react to Ray Dalio's uh, changing world order, right? We've been talking a lot about this, right? But but it's really up to, to those people who are willing to do something about it and, and, and hear what we're doing and hear it out and actually go take the initiative, right, to operate on this knowledge. Now, what's happened, guys, is a total, total, complete market capitulation and i brought this thing up capitulation and and, and a lot of people you know I, I i i'm assuming when we talk about different types of traders a lot of people assume these are the only types of traders that exist right there's a day trader um, um you know you know there'll be a swing trader there'll be a scalper and then there'll be a positional trade and this is not even in the right order in terms of how you hold so you'd want number one to be scalpers because they hold absolutely the shortest amount day traders open and close on the same day and then there are people like me who are swing to positional traders who hold trades for weeks and weeks and weeks on end fundamentally because we're riding the long-term trend we're, we're riding the institutional trend we're riding the trend of stuff that we track i am predominantly a swing and positional trade and a lot of you know that i've promised you module three which will help you 
into becoming a day trader, those of you who want to become day traders. But please note that it's not even called the day trader module anymore. It's simply smart money concepts because everything in module three will help you, whether you're a swing trader or you're a day trader. But a lot of those tools are great for day traders. A lot of those tools, I won't lie, are phenomenal for day traders. Right. So this is, this is a popular group of, of, of the so-called types of traders in the market. And, and that's fine. You know, I, I, I don't debate that. But there's a, another chapter, another level of traders we need to talk about. And these are actually not traders, but they affect your trading. And this is a category for a specific type of investors, right? Investors, we bring in a lot of capital, hold a lot of capital for a very long time in the same market that traders are trading. So basically, we need a whole bunch of people committed to the long-term picture, right? The very, 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 very big-term picture. And those people put in their capital like that, right, in the market. And, and, and these are people who believe that, ah, oh, Bitcoin is going to go to 100,000 US dollars per coin. NASDAQ is going to rally and make new all-time highs by the end of this year. These are investors. Investors also represent interesting bodies. They represent institutions. Some very big institutions like banks, hedge funds, mutual funds, insurance companies, oil companies, including something which is what I do, right? I also run a trading flow, right? So they will put in the 365 trading flow. So all these different trading flows in your bank, Standard Bank, APSA, every single bank that you know of at the headquarters has a trading flow of qualified traders. I just put out a notice in our public telegram group of a company in South Africa looking for traders, like financial analysts who are qualified. Right. Don't please don't email those people and say from 365. If you don't have the right qualifications, we were just trying to build a community here. So if you want a trading career, don't forget to check that out before the deadline is up. Right. But anyway, this group is uh, is a general, you know, you know, no class of society that invest in the stock market and other equity markets, including the Forex market. Right. The Forex market was originally and will always be an investor's market before it becomes a trading market, right? It's an investor's market. A lot of people put money there. Ray Dalio, the best, the biggest uh, hedge fund in the world, 60% of his portfolio, portfolio for about 15 years was in the Forex market. Warren Buffett had did uh, about a 1.5 billion US dollar shoot on Euro USD in 2008, and he's still holding those sales right now. All right, so so all these markets predominantly have an investor's mindset. Right, trading just becomes more relative because retail traders are trained to believe in quick money, and so they trade instead of investing. Now, when it comes to investors, and why this is an important way to start today's war room. Don't worry, I'm going to look at the charts. I'm going to talk to you guys about signals. I'm going to show you what I want to buy and sell. But you must understand, I'm bringing this up because it's been weeks since January. I've been telling you, you'll make more money if you sell NASDAQ. It's been weeks since people keep debating and keep trying to buy and they come out short. It's been weeks since people keep saying, no, you know, sell trend is over. It's now time to completely buy. And a week later, those people are destroyed in the market. I want you to understand why right you can build a house with wisdom this is literally from the bible but it is understanding that furnishes the house that turns a house into a home you must understand retail traders if financial markets are going to make money for you life-changing money life like 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 literally live the life that you want it won't come from increasing your lot size it will come from how you understand right so please once again check out the course now Inside this group of investors, they when it comes to capitulating, when we capitulate, by the way, if you guys remember, means giving up, means throwing the towel, means going, oh my goodness, things are bad. I am not going to let go of the gains. I've been holding the stock for 10 years and now things are now bad. Markets are starting to capitulate. And so let me sell my stock now. 
Let me get out. Let me sell my Bitcoin. It's another bear market. I'm going to buy it later, right? It's just kind of like capitulation is when you've arrived at a point of maximum pain. You can't take it anymore. My portfolio about two months ago, 12 months ago, one of them anyways, was 12% down because it was a strictly for altcoins. And the other time I woke up, it was now 40% down by the time Bitcoin made it all the way down to 30K. Somewhere in here is my investor psychology being tested. Somewhere in here are signals, red flags saying, are you still going to hold? Are you going to hold? Because it could get worse, right? So that's capitulation. When we talk about complete market capitulation, we are saying there's a group of investors who create the bedrock, the foundation of these financial markets. And we are very worried about these homes. We are very worried about where they are and what they are doing. And this is literally how it looks. Now, we have the first group, and I believe I am part of the first group, number one. Number two, I believe what I teach is to teach people to become part of the first group. And this first group is called systematic investors. And, and systematic investors, by the way, are almost the same thing as systematic traders. Systematic traders and investors generally who always have swing uh, to position or positions in the market. So these guys are here for the long haul, but not just that all investors are in general here for the long haul, but systematic traders or systematic investors are very methodological. There is methodology, right? Methodol, method, I don't know, logical, right? There is literally clarity in the step-by-step -step process in how they take, which is what I am trying to do every week here in those war rooms when I drop you know, videos for you guys to, to help you to become systematic. That means we care about data. If you notice on the channel, I'll talk to you guys about CPI. If you notice on this channel, I'll come back to you guys about a couple of fundamental stuff. If you notice on this channel, we will literally cover Powell's uh, FOMC meetings on every single interest rate. We care about the data. We use the data. If you notice on this channel, we'll look at COT. I keep encouraging 365 students to have their own COT spreadsheet, but if they don't want to have one, there's one that they all have access to on our remote course, right? That I, I update as regularly as possible. See the positions that the institutions are doing. This is a systematic perspective of the markets. You don't want to react of emotions. You don't want to hold for no reason. You also want to use real-time data to help you make very good decisions. Of course, for 365, we use supply and demand to help us finally put a nail in the coffin. Systematic investors, systematic traders is what we had throughout January when I kept telling you guys things are going to be bad this year all the data that we covered, the inflation data, everything is looking south. It's going bad. If inflation doesn't come under control by February, we are going to get recession. What did we get by February? Well, we had a war, we had more inflation, we had crazy uh, uh, energy prices, gas, oil, etc., etc. Therefore, the, the, the data that we saw in January, giving you guys the heads up that you need it literally was a, a self-fulfilled prophecy, all right? So these are systematic traders. What systematic traders started to do on our charts, and I showed you guys the stuff. And today I'm going to teach. I know some of you want to know, where, where can I buy? You know, I'm sorry, you know, you know but, but I, I truly believe you need to understand what's cooking. You have to, because it's about to, things are about to change again, right? So this is January, the 3rd of January. Systematic traders, Right, supply and demand, all the data would have realized that this upward channel here, after failing to surpass the 15th and the 22nd of November all-time high, which is when the FOMC started to taper, which I covered on the channel, right? It was all hell moving forward. So by December and very much into the first, second, and up to the third week of January, most knowledgeable systematic investors and traders would have stopped close their buys, and if they wanted to, would have started selling, right? It was clear that buying had come to an end. That's systematic traders. Systematic traders 
when it comes to investors, systematic investors and traders, by the way, are generally one of the first people to capitulate. Why? Because they are in, in tune with the data. So they move first. And so we started to see that they start to create the trend. Institutions are considered systematic. That's why 365, all I just to teach you how to trade like banks, right? Like literally understand their thinking so that you can be in the know when they move so that you move first. We call this smart money for that one reason. So same thing on the channel. We're selling NASDAQ. We're selling US 30. We're betting completely against capitalism. That's what those trades are. Over time, if you've been following how we look at our COT data, right? if you've been following how we look at our COT data, you will realize that the next group of people who follow the institutions, but not at the same rate with hedge funds. Hedge funds, I've explained this many times, have two um, 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 invested interests. They actually have the interest of market speculation, price speculation, but they actually also are, are trying to regulate the pricing for a real commodity, right? So you go to a hedge fund if you're a farmer so that you can profit whether the market performs or not, you're also hedged against the price. You can do that for oil. You can do that for almost anything, right? Hedge funds were the next group of investors to capitulate. Hedge funds capitulation starts around February, right? And with the intensification of the war, we see more and more hedge funds start to capitulate in March. All right. And we covered that very carefully. And then the third group of investors are your mutual fund. These guys come in last and that's because it's so easy to get a mutual fund license. I mean, if you were talking South Africa, I don't want, I don't want no one suing me, no one coming for me. But if, if you look at the stuff that old, I'm not even going to say, I'm just going to type it. I'm going to type it. This is an example, right? This is an example, right? Salem, or I don't even know how to spell that other company, right? But, 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 but if, you, if you look at, you know, the, the stuff that they offer clients, right? It's just basically to beat inflation. And a lot of it is given to basket traders. And a lot of that money is made of our service fees as cheap as they look, right? If you really think, but anyways, mutual funds globally started to capitulate in April. What, what's this doing? Right, remember, Fear, or and let's not even get into fear. Let's talk about momentum. Momentum to the upside, momentum to the downside. When a systematic trader starts to sell institutions, banks, uh, you know, institutional traders, that whole group, what are they doing? They're starting to open sell orders. When they open sell orders, uh, it, it will first go through a long list of buy orders. Once they exhaust all buyers and it's just them selling, all of a sudden we get a creation of a trend. By the time February, March comes in, hedge funds now start to add to the pile. They also start to sell. Can you see what's going on? By the time mutual funds come in, they're like, oh, damn, all right, let's join into the party. All right, now, 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 in supply and demand, I teach this all the time. Rule number one, rule number one, sell high buy low there is no greater simpler principle of supply and demand than this the problem is a lot of people don't know how to recognize a buy low and a sell high on the chart and that's because a lot of people have not done our course do the course i i, I will shamelessly plug this thing in because where markets are going for the next half of the year i will not have time you know, to kind of like sit through later on commerce. So take the course now, it's still 50% low until the 1st of June. You have eight days left to register. But this is a very big thing because very soon, the final group of people are capitulated. The final, final, final. You have to think about it. And we'll go to the Bitcoin chart right now. Like retail traders, they start to, we start to see real capitulation now in May. Look at, Popular stocks like Tesla. Tesla is a very big institutional stock, but it's got a massive retail trader following, right? Those guys are getting burnt. And it was me in the public Telegram group who told you I'm closing all my Tesla buys. Um, um, this is about two weeks ago before this wave started, right? Like get out now while you still can, right? Unless if you you don't mind, you know, holding unrealized losses for a long time, blah, blah, blah. It depends when you got in. But again, we also needed, I needed specifically some capital to move around, right? So this, by the time this fourth group comes now to add into the sell pressure, we have a very big problem in the market. And this is where most of us are. We are actually all considered retail traders, including myself. I am, I'm just a nobody in the market. The problem is trading 
Be just because you're a retail trader does not mean you must trade like a retail trader. Selling all the way down here is just dumb. It is fundamentally stupid. It is nowhere close to the definition of selling high. You could potentially be selling at the bottom. Now, I don't think we're at a stock market bottom. I'm just kind of like lamenting a very big import, important point. Right, now, once all four groups capitulate, and, and I said I was going to use the Bitcoin chart just to show you what I mean by retail traders. Retail traders, now, now, now you can imagine in 2020 we've got COVID, the markets fall terribly, it's disgusting, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's a bloodshed, right? Okay, cool. People's pensions, funds are lost. Remember, guys, it, it's also like a lot of people long term are invested in this market. Pension funds are literally put in here, right? Like, 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 like there's a lot of lives being destroyed, right? I simply sell because that's that's my job as a trader. Now, but but I I I, I am not you know completely lost to the fact that that's what's going on. But let's say you know you know you know in 2020 there's COVID, and and I won't even just use the American context. I'm going to use a global context. There's COVID in 2020. Things are bad globally, including South Africa. Generally speaking, there was a little bit of QE in South Africa, but globally there was a lot. There was a lot of QE, a lot of printing of the money, a lot of giving people money putting money in people's hands that, you know, they wouldn't have in general, right? Which actually discourages savings. Why should I save? I'm going to get a government grant every week to put money in my pocket because the economy is bad. The government is doing that to stimulate the economy. But it also, instead of encouraging saving, it encourages spending. So all of a sudden, a lot of people have extra cash in their pockets to try out some stuff to try out this crypto stuff, to try out this investing stuff. Let's see how much I'll lose. And if you jumped on that gravy train in March of 2020, look at where Bitcoin was. I mean, it's not like you didn't have me telling you on Facebook, but this is going to be the lowest Bitcoin will ever be. I said this two years ago, right? This thing was like 4,000, 6,000. The people who bought with us at 365 in March 2020, we are not yet currently realizing unrealized losses, all right? We are realizing a downwardness, right? Some, some, some reduction on profits, but we are not carrying unrealized losses. But there was a big pump. And we know with investor psychology, people only come in later. People will only believe you after you, have, you, you no longer have time for them. People will start to want to join 365 when the course is now 20,000 rands versus 3,000 rands, which is what it is right now. People want to start joining you too late. And that's just that's human psychology. There's absolutely nothing I can do about that. That's just how people are. They don't believe in the now. They believe in the later. They won't believe when Jesus is around. They'll believe 2,000 years later when it's now a religion. That's just human beings. I can use that example everywhere. Now, after the big pump and Bitcoin created multi, 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 multi generational income for so many people, you will start to realize that people start to believe. It starts to trend. If you go on Google Trends, everyone is Googling NFTs, crypto, NFTs, crypto. And you know, you always know when it becomes popular, that's when the pain is coming. Here comes January 2001. Well, here's my point. If anyone bought Bitcoin for the first time in their lives last year, not 10 years ago, not five years ago, just last year in January 2001, then they actually saw a big rally and then markets came back to put them out on zero, right? And depending on that person, within six months, this is June 2021, depending on that person's understanding of markets, they either got out with losses, got, I mean, anyone who got in here January, in May 2021, so exactly a year ago from the time I'm making this video, May 2021, is currently carrying unrealized losses. This is the group of people, we call them latecomers, and latecomers come in different phases. These latecomers, if they're still in, are still in the early adoption phase, but we are going to lose 90% of them. It's just how it is, and it, it is how it must be. Now, I've been calling for 20K in Bitcoin for as long as you've known me. I've been calling 20K for Bitcoin for as long as my daughter is old and she's turning two this May, all right? We have to come all the way down here, which means anyone who bought in January 2021 will absolutely lose. They will go through a complete annihilation. And that is because you bought late, but it's still technically buying early if you stick around for the next five years. So this is not financial advice, not me telling you to hold. It's me saying, why did you buy? Did you buy Bitcoin strictly out of FOMO? 
Why did you buy? Why do you do the things you do? Why do you have buy? Why do you even have a Luno app if you're not going to invest in the knowledge to do this thing right? Why did you buy? If you bought with the conviction of a five to 10 year plan, then hold on. If you bought with that type of conviction, then you better start to dollar cost average. Keep buying this thing as it falls. You are buying it cheaper, cheaper, cheaper with an understanding of price trajectory. If you don't have the answer to the why, stop. Literally leave financial markets alone. Go get a promotion, work your butt off. You know, it's a dog eat dog world type of thing. If you do not have the answer to your why. Now, this is where retail traders are starting to capitulate. This is my point. It's a little bit too late. All right. And now markets are, 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 are struggling to stay above float, above the 28,500 mark, which is really the last key level of support. I use the term support because, uh, you know, crypto for now is still very much under a much more retail trader spectrum. Um, but we do know that there are no demands left in that particular market. That means it's very difficult for me to even begin to believe that crypto is going to bounce back to all time highs here. I thoroughly believe crypto must come down at least to 20,000. And when it comes under 20,000, I will be praying, rain dancing, bomb shakalak dressing for a deeper crash all the way down to 12,000 US dollars because then all unfilled buy orders, which is a big concept that I don't have time to explain right now, but all unfilled buy orders from the great dips will have been completely bought up, which means if we can use this year to crash a little bit deeper, we will never come back to these low levels. There is, a, 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 and I can teach on that during the week to explain, but I must move on right now. Now, guys, this is a complete, this is maximum complete market capitulation. And what happens after this is, apart from this, this being big sells, is this creates fear. Fear begets fear. All of a sudden, even your strongest investors are starting to wonder what's going to go on. What does my portfolio look like? What are my taxes going to be after my portfolio? What, 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 what's the whole point here? And when investor fear begins, we have an, an incredible all-time high fear. And, 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 and there are many indicators um, out there in the markets that, that can actually show fear. If I can pull up one of them, I will. Please give me two seconds. Fear gauge uh, 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 for the stock market. And if I can't find it right now, we'll move on. But there are absolutely many investor sentiment tools that actually measure fear in the stock market. And right now, most stock market fear gauges are on extreme fear. There you go. Most stock market fear gauges are literally, you know, you know, in the realms of, of, of extreme fear. And, and this is, it's a cute time to quote Warren Buffett, but just be very careful, All right? The code goes, you know, when they're fearful, be, be greedy. When they're greedy, be fearful. And now I, I want you to know, nah, fam, just be careful. You're going to have to have very smart plays. I don't know if you can see the fear gauge index. I'm just going to refresh my screen so that you can share it. It is a pre-recording today, so I won't really have the, the, the blessings of people's feedback, if you can see my screen. But I trust I'm sharing the right screen. Right, so we're in extreme fear. In the market and this is a very very good aggregate it looks at the stock market it looks at a little bit of the crypto market it's a very good index and we are not we haven't been here in a long time ladies and gentlemen we are absolutely have not been here in a long time this sometimes can indicate a bottom right that price is about to to kind of like bottom and then all the buying starts. And when the buying starts, it's going to start in this order. It's first going to be the systematic traders who can now realize that the data is now saying it's time to buy. Inflation is now under control. We're going to see interest rates start to be reduced, right? And then hedge funds are going to eventually join in. So it's going to be the same pattern, right? First, these guys go up and then these guys join and then these guys come. And then retail traders, instead of buying low, Buying first are ones to buy last, and we use that that type of money to rally to the upside. Right, so, so this kind of, I'm just kind of like lamenting. Him. I'm in no rush today to give out signals if people don't understand what on earth is going on. Because I tell you guys, sell, and I've noticed in public groups those people actually follow and blah blah blah. On Wednesday, someone is looking for a buy setup, but but how? Wait a minute, what changed? What changed between Sunday and Wednesday? Because I didn't see anything as a systematic trader that tells me that Wednesday is not time to buy. You guys are playing around with your trading accounts because, you, you, and I'm worried, I'm worried. This is bear markets are vicious and ferocious. Bear markets are absurd.
absolutely quick and very dangerous. The other thing that we need to bring to everyone's attention is obviously recession. Recession is here, and we know the cause of recession. We're, we're with the oil, we've got the war, we've got inflation, we've got absolutely everything. This is not good with an all-time high of extreme fear in the markets. In fact, recession exacerbates that particular fear. And you need to be very worried if the fear arrives at the banking sector. Now, earlier on, I was talking about the banking sector as traders and investors, but now I'm talking about the other business of the bank. The bank sells something. There is no business that understands business better than the banks than the banks. The banks are the greatest capitalist business uh, you know, scoundrels of this earth, a complete mafia organization. The banks wanted to sell you money a long time ago, and because they didn't know how to do that without giving you a weird vibe of selling money, even though we print the money and we own the money, but we're still going to sell it to you, they started to create products. What are the products that the banks sell to sell you money? It's called home loans. Home loans are a product sold by the banks. Car loans, car payments, loan loans, school fees loans, and the list goes on. Banks sell debt. They are the greatest salespeople of debt, all right? A nice system within capitalism that is programmed to keep the majority of people in shackles. Do you understand? You are very much poor because of this. Now, if this extreme fear trickles into the, this side of the banking sector and these guys close the tap, right? Let's pretend this is a nice African trap tap that you know you know you know bill gates has come to build you, you, you've, you've you've seen the news i'm not even going to get into that nonsense right there's a nice tap the tap here is called credit if the banks close the tap to credit if the banks issue out warnings letters that they will not be loaning anyone money for six months for a year if that happens like it did in 2008 please note we already have a crash we're already in recession we already have inflation this issue in 2008 was the great catalyst to the crash. I am saying to you, with markets already crashing, if they add this pressure of closing the credit tap, man, there's no bottom, right? It's going to take us a long time. We're going to feel what it would feel like to fall into the pits of hell, right? It's going to be a very long fall with almost everyone in it falling all the way down. And that's just how it is. The Zimbabwean government, idiotically, as usual, front, always in the forefront of dumb, stupid decisions that affect people's lives, tried to close credit and bank loans just about a week ago or two weeks ago, I can't remember. I saw recently a new letter from the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe saying, you know, I don't think they said it was a mistake, but they say the banks are almost back to normal. They can now loan out money. That's always a dangerous thing when your bank starts to refuse to loan you money. Let me just give you a current statistic that has got nothing to do with the crisis. If you're in South Africa right now, one out of 20 people get, get approved for a business loan. I, I, I want to address a lot of things today for your trading. Now, if, if, if you watch my channel and you're serious about financial markets and trading, I want you to know I expect a better logical approach to social economic issues and i'm going to help you think through these issues foreigners in south africa are not the problem all right i i i really want to be very clear i am against people beating women on this channel i'm against people being racist on this channel i'm against people being xenophobic in this channel i'm, I'm against a lot of things foreigners i don't even think i spelled it correctly are not the problem in south africa so to speak in south africa the thing that you need are small businesses smes small enterprise businesses right to you want lots of support lots of small enterprise businesses popping up because a small business that can hire five to ten people is better than a big factory that can hire 500 people at once small business can be deployed across the country number one number two they become a great middleman i'm not this i'm not pro that version of economics but i'm just simply saying the logic is quite sound but for these small businesses to get going they need loans they absolutely need a state a government a freaking competent government that is able to give these people loans. Why? When these people have loans and they start these businesses, then they can start to hire. South Africa's unemployment rate 
is ranging between 40 and 50 percent. Depends how you look at it, but the correct range is between 40 and 50 percent, including those people who've given up, completely given up. Once you get these people loans to start their businesses, they start to hire people. But I just told you, the South African Reserve Bank has a mandate, and currently right now, one out of 20 business loans get approved, which means that dream of fixing unemployment is never actually going to get resolved. If you're a thinking human being, you will start to realize that we need to have good border, blah, 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 blah. I'm fine with that. But I am saying the real problem is your government, your minister of finance, the Reserve Bank government have to work at a better quarter to quarter on business loans non-discriminatory business loans if you really want to save it because that's where things are going now the last thing to give you guys context last week sunday i say and, and, and also on the telegram group i say the chart that needs to be now studied the new chart i told you guys about qqq which is an eft tracker for for the nasdaq right and i said look man if nasdaq is difficult to trade look at the qqq then enter just the spy which is an eft tracker for the s p 500 and the spy was your last line of defense last time when we spoke the spy had just bounced s p 500 there you go last time when we spoke the spy had just bounced before market crash level which is about 19 comma something 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 percent and we know that a bear market is when any chart moves 20 percent down from its all time high as soon as you leave your all time high is crypto blah 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 or let's leave crypto aside let's just talk stock markets nasdaq us 30 blah 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 and the spy ladies and gentlemen as if knowing it was now time to disappoint everybody which it did it went in for a duck uh, you know a nose dive right so it had a dead cat bounce we call this a dead kid bounce, right? Where this, this candlestick right there. And I marked this here. I said game over crashes here. And you can see uh, since then, S&P 500 actually dipped into the dangerous zone, closed above it, but already dipped in, right? There, there's a high chance that this is going to continue downside, crossing over to the threshold of about 20,66%, which meant S&P 500 also did the same thing. Uh, S&P 500 was also knocking on heaven's doors the last time I was with you guys. Uh, at about 19 comma something and the only one lagging behind is us 30. the only one lagging behind is us 30 there's s p 500 closed just below but be before it closed sorry just above it had dipped to about 20 comma something eight percent and and then just closed back above there on friday right so so, so 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 the red flags are gone guys the red flags the alarm bells we are way past that moment in our lives right now things are looking bad right we kind of like know this because we spoke about it as systematic traders and investors earlier on during the year. Now, this is the general rule that I want everyone to be aware of. Once the SPY and the S&P 500 crash, right, and go beyond 20%, the general rule in the markets historically is that what happens next is we should expect another 30 to 35% drop. Once we cross bear market territory, there will be people, I don't want to call them idiots, there will be people who will be buying pumps. And guys, if you know how to get these pumps in, you know how to get these buys in, don't listen to me. I'm not your financial advisor, all right? I am just some random person that some of you have met in person, some of you have never met in person, right? If, 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 you, if you like to buy NASDAQ and your trading strategy is telling you to buy, by all means, if that's what you want to do with your account, do it. But I'm simply saying, no matter what rallies I see for the next few weeks, it's going to take me even longer now to be convinced that the bear market will be, will be cut short. In 2020, the bear market was cut short because of FOMC. COVID, uh, a bear market, they came and they pulled out the printing machines, printed a whole lot of cash, put it in everybody's hands so everyone could buy the bottoms. They survived a complete stock market collapse because of that. The FOMC pulled out the big guns too early in 2020. The FOMC right now in 2022 is hawkish, right? That's supposed to be a hawk. A hawk is flying high, flying up. And a hawkish FOMC is not printing money. A hawkish FOMC is reducing the print. A hawkish FOMC is increasing interest rates, which kills demand, like we said in the channel. It kills 
demand. So we are expecting another 30 to 35% drop. I'm working on the understanding today, guys. I'm trying to work on your understanding of what to look for in case I disappear. All right. I want you to be able to do this without me. That's, my course is built that way. You get the entire trading tools, the entire perspective. I, I, I should just come during the week to give you guys the fundamentals and the news and to bring, you know, better things to perspective. But chart work, your charts tell you what I'm telling you before I tell it to you. And you need to know how to read the charts. So if we are beyond pricing in the Fed, because we know the Fed is going to be hawkish, we know this because a few days ago on my time off on the 17th of May, on the Wednesday, on the Thursday, Powell came back to shake the markets. Powell came to say a couple of things. He came to give us the roadmap, right? I, I'm drawing a lot on the whiteboard because I don't have my video on, right? So I'm, I'm con compensating here. He gave us a roadmap of what they want to do. And what they want to do was to basically say, he said, look, man, I'm happy to do two more 0 0.50 interest rate hikes for the next meetings. And the next meetings are in June and July. And we kind of like already knew all of this from the previous meeting that I covered in the live stream, where he also gave us a 0 0.50 interest rate hike, right? And remember, power is chasing that neutral soft landing. So he wants the interest rate by the end of the day to be about 2%, 2.5%. I'm going to show you how this is going to affect your trade. Just, just, just get the information with me. But this is not all. But the China, China is collapsing, guys. China, COVID, complete lockdowns, media bans. Media can't even cover it properly. So we don't even know how bad it is. But we know it's very, very bad. It is very, very bad. I think I saw something about monkeypox or monkey something. I can't remember. I think it was monkeypox. That can't be good news. Then we've got recession. That can't be good news. Then we've got global economic uh, 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 recovery coming. That can't be good news. We have multiple stock earnings that showed a lot of the big companies are actually failing. That can't be good news. We've got Elon Musk and Tesla news all over now. Big fight with the Democrats. Skeletons coming out, out of the water. That can't be good news. It can't be good news for investor sentiment. It can't be good news for market sentiment. It encourages fear. And we are already at extreme fear. We have also got news that Germany is sending, you know, tanks, war tanks to, 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 to Ukraine. We, we also got news this past week that um, um, uh, uh, the American government had a bill or whatever, and they're sending more support. And you know, the way it's, it's phrased, more support, for the war but technically speaking is this support going to end the war or or, or or allow for more continued fighting I'm, I'm not saying don't support ukraine i'm simply asking myself how do we press this stuff in all right and that's kind of like what we have to do uh, as our job and so all in all ladies and gentlemen i am still incredibly absolutely i'm going to look for brown i am still very 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 bearish in this market right and it's kind of like looks like a monkey all right, I am very, very, very bearish in this market. And I would encourage you to be bearish in this market, right? But I'm not your financial advisor. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just a guy with a YouTube channel who's trying to help as many people as possible who runs a trading academy course that does the exact same thing. That's all I am. I am not your financial advisor. If you think it's a perfect time to buy, everything is on discount and good. Now, and that's the last thing I want to talk about. During moments of turmoil in the market, a lot of opportunity exists. Everything dropping 20% said, well, there's room for this thing to fall 30 to 35%, which means wherever this room will end, one day markets would have dropped a total of 50 to 55%, if I'm right. If I'm right about this, all right? And I'll tell you when this will happen. I'm pretty sure by September we'll have gotten there. So there are going to be many ups, many moments to buy, many moments to fall, but the overall trend is down, in my humble opinion, right? If I had your dream house, and your dream house was 10 million rands or US dollars, it doesn't really matter, 10 million, and you had the 10 million, but just before you paid the 10 million, I told you, guess what? Um, uh, you know, we just want to quickly process the paperwork. So to make this very quick process, we're offering you a 20% discount on money you already have. You already have the 10 million. You can already afford your dream house. But we're going to give you a 20% off, right? So we're going to take about 2 million off that. So now all you have to pay is 8 million. You still get the house. 
We do not have extra money to keep. Would that not excite you? What about, same scenario, your dream house is 10 million. But I was to tell you, yeah, look, man, we just actually spoke to the, the people who want to sell the house and they've locked the house and they look like they like you guys, you're a good family, and they want this house to be owned by you, this, you specifically. They like you guys for this house. They don't want anyone else to get it. So they're offering you guys right now a 50% off the house if you buy it right now. And you already had the 10 million, but they're now offering you 50%, which means your dream house is now 5 million and you also get to pocket 5 million bucks. Would that not excite you? That's exactly what's going on. The good long-term crypto projects, the good long-term stocks will bounce back. What you need to understand is right now we're in a bear market, but as we go down in a bear market, try to de-dollar cost average, DCA. I've done a video on this many times because you keep getting stuff that you believe in, that you know will work for you in the long term on discount. Don't sleep on the discount. If you're holding Bitcoin and you bought Bitcoin in 2019, I don't know, 20, whenever you bought it, doesn't really matter. And it keeps falling. If you truly believe and you and your ancestors and your financial advisors truly believe it's going up to the moon, then if I were you, I wouldn't want to buy at 100K when Bitcoin is 100K a coin. If I were you, I would stop thinking like a retail trader. If I were you, I would avoid making the same mistake over and over again and expecting different results. I would start buying in now. The more it falls, the more discounts I get, the better I am in the long run, right? That's just, you know, you know, a, just a mouthful about a couple of perspectives that I think everyone should be considering, right? Ladies and gentlemen, with that introduction and market sentiment and just me saying my piece done, I'd like to spend the next, I guess, hour or so uh, mapping out a couple of charts. Today, I'm going to be looking at NZD CAD, USD CAD, USD Swiss franc, NZD USD pound, USD the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, palladium gold, euro pound, uh, silver, USD, uh, euro USD, and oil. If there is time to do all of those, I will do them, and then we can then call it a day or yeah, a week. And then we'll, I'll just stay tuned, stay, stay very much connected onto the channel. Please do subscribe, like the video if you're still around, um, um, because there'll be a lot of things going on this week. But I'm really excited for the first of June. The podcast is coming back. Uh, on the 1st of June on the channel. A lot of things are going to change. We're going to have a crypto war room once a week on the channel. We're going to have a crypto traders program uh, um, uh, uh, on and off the channel. So, so, so look out for that, right? And module three, yo, oh my goodness, finally, right? Uh, all the things that come right now. Before I get into the charts that I said I want to look at, this is important. If you're still listening, if you are still listening, this is important. This is important. This is important. This is important. I want to say it one more last time. This is important. I don't know how far fear is going to take us in the markets. I don't know, and I don't care. Okay, that's kind of like my 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 point of view there. I don't know, and I don't care. What I do know is I'm going to be prepared for it. You you saw Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is that support level at twenty eight thousand five hundred. Let's look at Ethereum. Look what I did. For you guys and for myself earlier on at Ethereum. I looked at the last time Ethereum was at an all-time high, which was when obviously Bitcoin was at an all-time high. Excuse me, which was the what they called the 2017-2018 uh, market crash. Ethereum fell from its all-time high 94%. Okay, 94% before before starting to recover. So to, to, to be exact, Ethereum was about 1,000 US dollars per coin. So if you're in South Africa, let's just run up to about 15,000 rands per coin. So if you bought a coin at the height of 2018, today's exchange rate is about 15,000 rands a coin. And the baby fell all the way down to about 81 US dollars per coin. Right? So that we call that a, it was a flash crash, basically like a, a clean 94 something percent. So literally from buying coin, one coin for about 15,000 rands to literally spending about 1,200 rands per coin, which means you could have bought 15 coins if you had 15,000 rands to spare if you started to buy at the bottom here, right? 
But as we all know, uh, you know, in these markets, you know, crashes come with booms and bursts, which is actually the dangerous, terrible nature in all facets of capitalism. And so Ethereum, you know, you know, recovered. All right, recovered, recovered, recovered. Let's exit out of this. Let's go back to another one. And then we came to that Bitcoin level, somewhere down here. There was a Bitcoin level, the one where I said buy Bitcoin at four thousand. It was in twenty twenty of COVID. I'm just focused on Ethereum right now. I want you to see something. And I want you to, I want you to hear me today, man. I want you to hear me. I want you to understand me. Right. So if you check the dates here, you'll see this is like the month of March 2020, COVID, right? That clean COVID recovery. After the 94% crash, it went all the way up, right? Broke this all-time high, really. So the person who invested 15,000 rands all the way up here and held it through the crash, and held it all the way, did not make as much money as the person who invested so much less down here and held to the exact same place, right? Mathematically, they did not, okay? Because they bought low. Whoever bought here gained all of this versus someone who bought there and only gained up to there, all right? It's, it's, it's just simple math, okay? Remember that. Now, historically, ladies and gentlemen, if I can pull out my, my, my whiteboard um, 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 as quickly as possible, uh, I, I thought I was done teaching. I, I genuinely thought it was now time to give out the signals because you know that's all they want. Right. Historically, BTC will crash about 80% for a big correction, historically. And Ethereum will do, you know, a little bit more 88 to 90, but just put it on that 80% range. And then altcoins will get a shake, a shake or break. All right. And when it comes to altcoins, you could lose many, right? Some will come down to zero. <coughs> Luna, right? But I've made a lot of money from Luna. Bye. <laughs> we'll talk about that another time, right? So, 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 and, and I think I announced the, 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 the risky Luna move on the private students group. So, 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 I was transparent with my students, right? So, altcoins, some of them can come to zero during a crash, all right? So, it is prudent, very much prudent to always map out where you think price is going not where you think map out logically where price is going to the best of your ability through supply and demand uh, and just just some basic simple institutional rules so just like we have rules for the stock market s p 500 fell 20 percent remember we did that earlier on uh, nasdaq 20 percent right so we've got bear market crash 20 percent for the stock market if you look at where ethereum is today from the all-time highs ethereum right now still trading on a beautiful sunday has dropped already about 58%, 58% from the all time highs of last year when the stock market and crypto started to fall, it's already fallen 58%. Its counterparts in, in the risky equities have done 20% drop. And we know that its counterparts have what? Another 30 to 35% room to fall. And we know on this channel, Leroy keeps telling you that there is a coupling between the stock market and the crypto market. We know this because we attend every Sunday and we are getting better and better every day as traders, right? And so because of that, ladies and gentlemen, it is improved. I, I thought, well, let me have a look. Let me look at my order blocks. Let me look at my order flow. Let me look at my supply and demand on this chart. Let me even go Hakini Hash. Let me pull, let me pull all the stops. Let me see what's crackalacking. Right. So this is my last all-time high. I'm assuming there's gonna be a lot of retail traders trying to view this as a support. This level here between 14,000 or oh, sorry, 1,400. Uh, and about 118, right? This level here is going to be viewed as some type of psychological support where markets might potentially want to bounce from. I am aware of that. I know that's how they think. So I must prepare for that in my trading. That some, a lot of retail traders are going to use a lot of money to try and pop the market up there. And in the event they're wrong, in the event that we are right, that institutions now finally have a green light and they want to come play in crypto, in the event that some of the smartest people in the room are starting to realize that the long-term smart play is crypto because it is inevitable. Crypto markets, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the crypto markets are to you and to me, and I'll never forget the story in my life. And somewhere between 1996, I was six years old, staying in a flat with my parents. I was still the firstborn child. My little brother was not born. My little brother was born in September, and I know this had already happened, but sometime, Deep in 1996, my father came home very excited and he was really smiling. He had a big surprise for me. 
And this surprise was so big, ladies and gentlemen, you could literally see the bulging in his pocket. Does anyone know what I'm drawing? The surprise was the Nokia 5110. I think it was called 5110. I could be wrong. And uh, not the brick, uh, but, but, but the very, 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 very first first version of Nokia. The very, very the, the black one. The, I, 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 I forget the model name. But my father had the very first. He wasn't the first to have it, but he had one of the very first phones. But when, when they came out, right? So he came home. I came home. I was from Chris or wherever I was playing 5110. I was actually in grade two by the time I was six years old. So I was not from Chris. Yeah, I'm right. It was the Nokia. 5110. Remember these bad boys? These bad boys. My old man had one of those and he was chuffed because inside his pocket, he believed he was carrying technology. Inside his pocket, he believed we had arrived as a society at the epoch of technological revolution, communication revolution, the 5110, the Nokia 5110. And after that, there was another break and you know, the Nokia 3210, which came out a little bit later on. Remember all these things, right? This, this, this is kind of like my childhood. This is kind of like my, this is the very first, uh, you know, you know, no, no, gen cell phone at that particular time. With, uh, what happened? Did I, did I, okay, I can fix that. No worries. I'm still here. I'm still with you. Right. So, 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 so this is it. Buying crypto right now is basically investing in the, in the long term capabilities of such technology, which then ushered in uh, uh, the internet by 1996 in South Africa. The internet obviously existed a long time before that through, through military blah, blah, blah in the United States, which then ushered in uh, 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 the first smartphone, which was BBM, right? Technological advancements, which then uh, ushered in all sorts of things, which finally got us to iPhones, which has now gotten us to Pi phones, Elon Musk phone. But my point is, the people behind the early adopters were in early crypto adoption stage. That's my whole point. It feels like we're carrying 5110s in our pockets. But the difference is we know where this generation is going. We know that it's not, we're not always going to have 5110s. We know we're going to get to touch screens and iPhones and Samsung and all sorts of things. But we are blessed to know that now, knowing the direction of where we're going. That is what crypto is to finance, to the future of finance. Getting in now is what's called the early adoption strategy. Nobody who gets into early adoption strategy phase, sorry, early adoption phase and holds, stays steady, not financial advice, but holds and buys during the drops, dollar cost average, especially when it's crazy to do so during a recession. It is absolutely crazy to do so nobody loses long term right i i, I mean i mean I, I don't know how else to say it without telling you what to do because i don't want to tell you what to do only thing i want you to do is to join 365 and take the course because it will help you and i won't have to use war room space to do this all the time so that's the only thing i want to do but other than that it's completely up to you but bitcoin has an 80 percent chance of falling during these big crashes ethereum blah 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 so that, that, that was my main point. Now, if you look at the Ethereum chart, we've down 58% right now. And all I wanted to do was to figure out, well, where, where is 80%? Where, where is it? Where is that 80 to 90% window? Oh, I found it. So that's a 90% drop there on Ethereum, which is the last time there was institutional order flows in the chart in uh, 2020, which is the bull run year. So my trading strategy that is of supply and demand tells me that there is an incredible amount of unfilled order somewhere in there. And that is the difference between trying to buy Ethereum again at 4,000 US dollars per coin, right? It's actually 4,800 from the old time high, which is about almost 80,000 rands per coin if in South Africa to buying the exact same asset, the exact same potential for 500 us dollars so imagine someone saying i believe in ethereum but i can't afford it i can't afford owning ethereum i believe in this project i get it i can see the entire blockchain is built on it therefore this thing is not going away but i can't afford eighty thousand rand per coin what if i could start dollar cost averaging right and get to a place where i can afford one coin Eventually, if you keep buying, you keep buying as it keeps falling. What if it falls? What if I'm not crazy? 
What if I am not crazy and it does fall all the way to about 500 US dollars all the way down there? And you started buying, buying, buying. How many coins could you buy for yourself if you stopped drinking or cut half your alcohol or whatever? Your stupid expenses, man. I mean, I don't drink, I don't smoke. So maybe it sounds, I'm, I'm, I'm being snobbish. But the things in your life that you spend money on that you probably would be better used in preparing for a long-term financial future. What would you do with that money if you started to dollar cost average in this project, right? It's already, it's already, listen to me, it's already at a 58% discount. It could reverse and go to the moon right now. I'm not saying it won't. I don't think it will. I think we still got a lot more pain. But if, man, if, 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 if we, by any chance, don't survive this, these areas and all these buys get melted away as Bitcoin makes its move to 20K, if Bitcoin goes to 20K, we know Ethereum is going to follow. Then, then just keep your eyes wide open. This will be the greatest wealth transfer moment of many smart people's lives. Don't say I didn't tell you. All right. Do not say I didn't spend an hour of a war room not breaking the stuff down. I just looked at Bitcoin and I looked at Ethereum. There are many of these bad boys. There's the Binance coin, which is actually almost done in terms of circulation, right? In terms of market cap circulation, in terms of coin circulation. Um, 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 let me just quickly think where to show you the stuff. A lot of these coins are about to be removed off the supply. What, what's going to happen then when you can't buy anymore, right? When, when, when it's finished, what's going I mean, I'm just asking, like, I'm asking questions that I hope people are asking themselves, right? We will cover the stuff again, you know, a lot more. There we go. Bitcoin, 90% of its supply is circulated. 90% is there's only 10% of Bitcoin left in the world. 10%, right? When something gets more scarce, the value of that thing goes up. That's one way to look at it. Look at Binance coin, right? 98% of its coin is circling. Only 2% left. Binance is still the biggest crypto exchange platform in the world. They invest in multiple crypto projects in the world, right? XRP, still a little bit of time there. 48%, you know, in the current sector, so, so almost the same, like almost about 50% coins left. Uh, Cardano, I'm, I'm not really part of the cult, but 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 it's a good project, right? You you have to start asking yourself these deep questions. Uh, Polygon Matic built on Ethereum. Look at her, eighty percent of their coins are already circulating. The, 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 you 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 guys don't understand. Once this is done, the window is closed. I told you, a bit, don't 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 ninety Bitcoin Cash. Don't, I'm, I'm just doing this to say on record, I told them, right? 365, shake my hand if you're still around and you stayed for, 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 for the video and you enjoyed the, the education and the knowledge, please, 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 please. Oh no, was I not sharing my screen this entire time? Oh, I was, I was. Please, please, please do not forget to like the video. Um, 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 but let's get cracking, guys. So let's talk about trades for this week. Let's talk about what's going on in the financial markets. Let's talk about where the next plays are. Right. So there we go. Orders all shops to shut down, residents to stay home. Shanghai, you know, it's just, it's just a whole lot of stuff is going down, guys. It's really, it's really terrible. It's terrible. And if this catches on to the rest of the world, the fear is just going to go crazy. Russia bans nine hundred three Americans, including Biden. <laughs> Right, so, 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 yeah, some petty stuff is going on there in geopolitics. Australian election, I've not been following that. Don't care too much for it. Right, uh, AUD JPY is not part of what we're looking for this week, but maybe you can come back here and kind of like have a look for yourselves. So I'm to triple check. I'm sharing the right screen one more time. One more time before we get started. There we go. Right, stock snatch, victory from the jaws of defeat, at least for S&P 500 and Joe. All right, so, 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 you know, so how these analysts are reading what happened on Friday, all right, how these analysts are reading what happened on Friday, is they're trying to say, look, man, don't panic, all right, I, I hear what Leroy is saying, but don't panic, all right, at the end of the day, the S&P 500 did go below 20%, right, did breach bear market, but price closed above it. All right, price closed above it. That's what they say. They, so for, 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 for a lot of these financial guys, they're saying, look, man, at the end of the day, markets did not close in bear market. Yes, we had some trade in that low, which was very dangerous, but markets are actually closed about an, at an 18% crash. And therefore, 
for these financial analysts, they actually could be advocating for the fact that it is still not yet fully bear market, right? Stock snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, at least for S&P and Dow, right? You know, I call this bollocks. Um, um, you know, we, we've crashed, right? Can the dollar retracement run? Guys, we spoke about this. I told you guys, do not forget this many times. I mean, I show up two to three weeks before a lot of these things happen and I give you guys the play, right? I say, let's draw a sharp um, 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 uh, short-term uptrend, right? Parabolic structure. And, and I hated that this was a not trading week for me. Um, I, I know a lot of students are waiting for some contents around gaps. I saw that. I saw you guys and stuff. I was taking time off, but, but no problem. I got you. I'll cover gaps again. There was a beautiful gap here. I just marked it. I just marked it. Uh, 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 but I did not trade it. I was just, it was a good gap to show my, 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 my kid. Right. So let's quickly tighten um, 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 this trend line. Okay. It looks tight enough, although this point here should be, should be touching. I'm just lazy to, to kind of like fix it. But we drew this upward trend on the dollar and we say if price breaks and it will break, right? Brace yourself for, for a clean retracement, right? So I'm hoping for a continuous down sell. You know, I, while I missed this one, I'll show you the gap. I'll show you the gap on the one hour time frame. You can see it as clear as day. Remember, gaps signify the biggest imbalance on the markets, it's the biggest move the banks are making institutions, right? Markets create a top here and then whoop, right? Gap to the downside. So, all you have to do is to wait for markets to come back to the supply, not trade the gap, trade the supply that created the gap. And there we go, we've got a beautiful fall, right? And, and this might be a good trade in place for the DXY. We shall see, right? I'm not yet certain. I'm not yet certain, but if it's part of the list to cover today, we'll come back right now. I'm just a little bit mindful of time spent, you know, preaching. Um, 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 but, but yeah, I'm interested to see this, right? So I, I do expect a little bit of more continued dollar to fall all the way down here. Um, and the reason for that is if you come to this DXY chart that I, uh, that is less markings, right? You will realize that, the, you know, the dollar is come, come into a, a new supply. So this is the Donald Trump supply. Right, that we finally broke through that COVID March supply that marked Donald Trump's presidency and his exit all the way down here with COVID. This is Biden's demand. I've told you guys many times, we look at all financial market instruments. When it comes to the dollar, democratics always come in at a time of the demand. You can almost predict elections through that. Not that I'm saying, ah, whatever, you know, you know, go study the charts, you'll see it for yourself. Right, but markets have broken the supply and made contact with the higher demand, and that's currently what we are dealing with right now, right, on the DXY, right? So, so, so it's significant, right? It's actually quite significant. See, a bearish engulfing candlestick, you know, on the weekly time frame, really could bring us all the way down here on the dollar. And, and, and this is 99.98. And, and, and if you go back to my marked charts, my proper dollar marked charts, you'll realize that that is still within this 98 range here. This is still very much within that upward trend line, right? And, and it's going to be interesting to see that happen while, you know, FOMC is, is trying to increase interest rates. It's going to be very interesting to see that happen, right? So, you know, can dollar retracement run? I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that's what they're talking about, or at least that's my interpretation of it. Oil, still is at 113. So this was probably Friday. Let's see where we are today, Sunday, just before the market open. No, you're not going to tell us. All right, okay, we'll have to go to the, to the charts, but you see Brent all closed at about 112, right? Give or take, right? So, and, and that's kind of like continuing for a while. I know oil charts are part of the things we need to look at today. So we will go have a detailed look there. What's up for this week? Uh, that'll save me time. We can just see what's up for this week. Fed Bullard, we have to get inflation under control. We have a good plan to do so. Um, and, uh, and it's just probably like the same thing that Paul has said. Um, you know, I'll get into more inflation stuff towards the next meeting. Let's see what happens there, right? Uh, Innocence is a little bit high on the day. That's good, good, good. Right, I, I think that's all we can take from this, man. I'm, I'm not really too much sentiment-based today because of time. UK rules out, uh, Ukraine rules out ceasefire and ceding territory in Moscow, uh, all right? So Ukraine is still like deep, 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 deep within the, you know, Within the pits of the war, you know, uh, Australia, the Fed doesn't care about your stock portfolio. I think I say this all the time. I say this all the time. It's so cool to see what I say all the time as an actual headline, right? He will, power will, oh, it's called monkeypox. Yeah. Okay. Monkeypox is spreading around the world. Okay, cool. N nothing too crazy, right? This week, financially, what should we be look, looking out for? 
On Monday, we've got a couple of Fed guys talking, Bostick and George. I can't remember if these two are hawkish members of the Fed or, or dovish members. It won't make too much of a difference. We don't really care about that on the channel in general, right? Just check out the oil inventories. It will just give you kind of like a look into if the deductions are being made and where price might actually go. I have a look at this. I like to start profiling what type of NFP we're going to have. So I collect the weekly initial jobless claims data. Uh, okay, cool. So, 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 so nothing too crazy this week. Nothing too crazy. All right, guys. Right. So on to the business of the day. Signal number one, NZD cat. And I can hear someone going, oh, finally. I don't need to know all that stuff that he was talking about. I don't need to know any of that stuff. I don't need to know how it works. I just want to see the money in my account right good luck with you good luck with you with that mindset good luck with you I, I don't need a mentor i don't need to do a course i can just learn from youtube all right all right um um um, um. good luck with you too you know i it's it, 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 it's that time of the year now where i kind of like just need to keep focused on 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 on, on those who want to move forward right and and everybody must be allowed to choose their own path this is a very important thing. Right, NZT CAT, it seems like we already marked this out in the previous uh, um, 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 charts and the previous war rooms, I apologize, right? So we've got um, a drop here from, 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 you know, give or take the same all time, not all time highs, but, you know, if it was a strong peak for a break of, you know, a temporary structure, it's not a real channel that I drew here. I was just watching temporary structures. Uh, and then market started to fall, fall. NZD had to be weaker than CAD. CAD was strong because of oil, right? We've covered this a couple of times, right? So markets are falling down. Markets are arriving at very interesting bedrock demand areas that might be difficult to break, but could break if there's a need be. All right. And then we realized that, well, we, if you missed out on the sales up there or if you closed or, or whatever the case was, the next place you should expect selling was somewhere in here. So we still stand by that. There'll be people as usual who are going to ask me if we're going to sell up there, why can't we buy going? That's not part of my trading style. I just don't do that. I don't play with money. It's expensive to lose hard end money. You trade so well for three months and you blow your account within a month, it breaks your morale. When your morale is broken, you create a certified program of the loser, which creates terrible trading psychology. And that continues and goes on and on and on and on in your life as a cycle forever. So, what I like to do is to make sure i am taking you know you know no sound based trade so if you're still holding this right if you did if you didn't exit out of this um uh, uh, like me and you really 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 hold it then you, you probably have locked just above here and and you want i'm only looking to take another sell position here this area marked red could hold we'll know this week right but this is a high risk area it's what i call a cowboy area so please if you're taking it take it with that mindset that i don't see it working a thousand percent right i'm not that comfortable with this whole trade and if it is try try your best to kind of like wait until marriage right in the setup and that means wait to for the highest sell don't just sell almost immediately right just 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 hold on right don't prostitute your your capital right try so that if you're wrong about this you know cowboy area at least you are closest to the stop loss which allows you to take very 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 minimal damage than holding this entire cowboy zone right so nzd cat unfortunately there's not much news there for me i am waiting those of you who are buying up buy up quite carefully right there's nothing wrong with buying up buy up quite carefully usd cat i made a public post about this i've closed this beautiful buy price got there i closed and yeah sure i should have held on a little bit more how would i have known i didn't right and since then markets have kind of like calmed down why are markets coming down because the dollar is falling i just showed you the dollar i show you that it's falling i showed you but more retracement you know you know no no no, no space to go now where do i think this market is going to turn well let's do a proper analysis of it i guess uh let's do a proper analysis of it usd cat i can actually remove this close all these notes here since I have now shared them with you guys on the Telegram, right? It'll be nice to see USD CAD remove this uh, Donald Trump supplies, right? Right, please. So 2016, 2017, and then 2020 COVID, right? Same, same, same areas. 
but markets right now are literally knocking at a strong governing supply. So between dollar falling and price arriving at a supply here and CAD being strong because oil is staying above $100, we could see some downside first for a while, right? So part of the reasons why I was not that excited or motivated to hold my buy was because of that. It was just that I, it was so difficult to envision a long-term upward climb. It felt like I was actually going to lose 80% of my profits if I didn't close before markets start to rally in that direction again. Now, if you're looking for buys, and I would understand why you're looking for buys, just make sure there's a correlation between your buys and dollar bounce back, right? Make sure the green dollar is, is ready to bounce um, um, so that it kind of like gives you that aided support here, right? And hopefully by then oil will be falling a little bit. But if markets break below this level, which is what I will be waiting for, okay, I, I don't, I don't want to buy anything here. I don't, and, and it might be the case where I get left behind and I'm fine with that. But if markets were to, to kind of like, you know, break below this area, then I would want to come start looking for buys all the way down here on the daily time frame. That's what I would do. Oh, I am on the daily time frame. Right, so then I'll start to drop to H4. Okay, so we've got an order block just outside and then a deeper one, you know, here. So I, honestly, these two places would have my full undivided attention, like that. So when it comes to buying, that's what I'm waiting for. I'm gonna wait for markets to come all the way down there. Remember, I'm a sit and forget trader, so I don't have to pay attention. I simply calculate my risk. I look at how many pending orders I have on the table, how much money am I risking, where's my maximum pay. Uh, you know, I've taught you guys risk allocation, risk management on the channel. In, in the description down below, there should be a link to two risk management videos that you should literally sit through um, 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 you know, before any trading is done, right? And somewhere in here, one would argue for some daily confluence between these two zones. So I'd have a, an opinion order here and opinion order there. The one at the bottom would be the biggest competitor the one there in case markets break through to buy low all the way down there, right? And if we buy low there, then I'm definitely holding again for a very long time on USD CAD. The next one is USD Swiss franc. Ba -da -da -da. Let's go to the governing time frame. Isn't she pretty? Right, so cowboy area was exhausted, like this was obvious. But what was not what was interesting was the fact that even the governing supply has been taken out. I don't know if you guys are in any sales here. I'm not, unfortunately. Um, you know, I, I completely, completely missed this. And like I said, not a, not, a, not a trading week for me. Right, so this all happened this week. Um, um, so hopefully you guys got in safely. I can see that there was definitely a stop loss um, uh, a hunt here uh, as of about you know the 16th of May, give or take. Um, definitely missed this. Right? Yeah, Monday. All right, so yeah, that makes sense. I was not even trading. Right, but, but, but and maybe I'm sure an alert came and I just ignored it. I really did do my best to stay away from trading this past week. Right, so, so, so dollar has been strong against the Swiss franc, but right now dollar is rotating to the weak side. Uh, uh, and again, it's just a temporary retracement. There goes price taking out the first demand, and then this is the first one to, 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 just like how we've mapped out. And if markets don't stand, you know, hold there, then just, just be very mindful. This probably might be in line with that H4 DXY demand level. So just be careful of that. And if that doesn't hold, then you're looking for a deeper, you know, deeper nose dive. But this is a very good golden ratio, clean area for some type of buying. All right. So this will be good. Right. The only difference or the problem is this buy area has no confluence with the weekly. Okay. And it's got none. It is just, you know, camping there by itself. So, so just be mindful of that. It, it could be classified slightly as a higher risk trade because there is no confluence, no bigger structure to support it, you know, but, but it also looks viably healthy. Um, so yeah, just be mindful of that, but there's definitely some buying opportunity here. And then obviously all the way down there, if this one at the top does not happen, I will be trying to buy at the very first one, right? Even though there's no confluence, I accept the risks um, that I am taking with that or, uh, rule you know, not be met. NZD USD, 
All right, we've got uh, the rise of NZT currently during dollar weakness. NZT is approaching a very interesting place in the markets. Um, this is for people who believe that the dollar is going to be strong this week. If you do believe that, then this is really an opportunity to, you know, sell um, NZT USD. And I don't necessarily think Sorry, I'll say that again. If you think the dollar is going to be strong, if you think the dollar is going to bounce back all of a sudden, then, you know, this is something to kind of like look into, right? Reacting from this area. I don't like the supply because it's the first supply. There's nothing wrong with being the first supply, but there's something better, something more attractive uh, 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 than, than the first supply. And there's always previous suppliers that are slightly higher. So you can see here, I've already marked these areas up and I really would like to try to sell up there and not here. This will be a place to watch. So maybe we could get some very good intraday trades. In this zone there, all right, temporarily. Okay, you could also get some very good intraday trades, right, moving to the upside. Okay, so time will tell. But on the H4 time frame, right at the proximal line or the entrance of the daily chart, there is a slight cluster that is trying to, to, to kind of like accumulate uh, some orders, right? So generally speaking, hopefully this can be ignored and markets move a little bit higher to sell. Um, if it doesn't sell, you know, such is life, right? Pound, USD, but again, I'm looking to sell higher, right? So I, I'm not that invested in that small area. I want to sell higher. Pound, USD, let's go to the governing time frame. Yo, I can actually feel my little girl's uh, flu starting to, to kind of like completely grip my body, guys, right? So, you know, pound USD is still reacting to that governing demand. Not much to say there, except for the fact that we expect some type of reaction and we got it this week. Wow, a strong green candle creating a bullish engulfing candle on top of a governing demand. Um, um, so watch out for that. But where is price going is the bigger question. If markets clear this area, and remember, all of this is based on dollar being weak. So if dollar continues to be weak, there is no reason why markets can't clear this area, which is why I'm saying I'm not in a rush to sell NZD USD in case markets need to use it later. Sorry. Right. So, so you you know, in a perfect scenario, if you're if you you want to trade something now. You're already in a supply. You want to see price go down on Monday, right? But if that doesn't happen, then you are aware that this is going to happen. All the time, okay? This is what I've been looking out for, pound USD. Um, um, so yeah, you know, the race is to, to whoever wants it. Time and chance for everyone, your all different trading strategies. Um, um, if, you, if you really feel the need to buy it up, going up there then you, you do that i won't be doing that i think that's my point here my point of this war room is to tell you what the head trade of 365 trader will be doing in the markets right i will not be buying uh, because they could very much well use see here where i didn't want to sell again i sold up there i could have not sold ever again thinking markets are going to come sell up here and look where market stopped as soon as they hit that proximal um you know weekly distal line whatever Markets made a U-turn and then started to sell again. And this is literally the same for NASDAQ, US 30, et cetera. Right, so, so the, the, uh, the, the move on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right, this past week, basically from Monday, has kind of like put a, a supply like that somewhere there on the daily time frame to be very mindful of, right, in terms of decisions to go up. And the question now is, well, S&P 500, as you saw in that headline, dodged a bullet closed just above 20 percent even though it touched the bearish territory it did not close in it right so that's kind of the argument right now for all these uh, uh, uh bullish uh, uh financial analysts right but i don't i'm not really a buyer of that type of situation now what could happen is this could be a strong enough supply and we've seen it before where markets actually congregate weaken an area but together you know, create an even stronger, you know, sell point, right? So this could literally happen. Um, and then if this doesn't happen, then that will happen, okay? All the time, all right? Um, and if that breaks, then you might as well be in a market recovery, okay? Might, might as well be in a market recovery mode. We shall cross that bridge when we get there. NASDAQ 100 is the next chart that we need to look at. I'm just flying through these guys because I've already done a lot of teaching, right? I'm just telling you, 
what to mark up, where to mark up, because I've explained why, the process as to why I'm thinking like this. Right, it's very similar uh, to S&P 500. NASDAQ 100 created a new formula, a new supply, a new selling place, a new something somewhere here, just like you know the S&P 500. So just be very mindful of that, right? If it doesn't work out, then you've got this two. And then if it doesn't work out there, then you know markets are probably in a full-blown recovery or something has happened which at that point in time when it comes i will cover if we get a big news that is very life-changing and completely market uh you know round tabling and you think it's absolutely absolutely phenomenal just it trust me i will come back to the channel and i'll update you until then there's a bracing golf and pattern to me another one there another one there there's a lot of soul pressure on this chart still bearish i'm absolutely still bearish right palladium we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago and when we spoke about palladium we were looking at this direct correlation with gold and i explained to you that there has never been a chart where i've ate so well in my life than palladium palladium is the beast of all beasts and then we spoke about where to sell and and all that kind of stuff um um, um you know the last time we were here because gold was falling and i'm pretty sure somewhere in today's war room i will look at gold before i disappear right and so you can see now you know since that last time we looked at palladium war room i don't know 65 66 somewhere back there uh today's war room 68 by the way right you can see we've got we're you know like a strong downward you know spiral right a breaking of the highs and markets just kind of like Yeah, just just trading along, man. Just reacting, you know, as best as they can, right? On the weekly time frame, markets have arrived at a weekly mayoral demand, so to speak, right? And and there's this weird cluster holding price together. This green zone here, and there's a new one here, another bullish engulfed right there, and that's going to take, you know, some considerable time to break this um, um, demand zone for the downside, right? But 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 for the most part, palladium is 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 very much. You know, um, um, I'm bearish, right? You can see that this metal became popping in March of 2020, right? That's that what that candlestick and lines means, right? 2020, and then ever since then, ever since you know everything stopped, things have been drying out, right? Markets are now starting to fall again. Okay, so we'll see how long that lasts. But you know, palladium is a very good asset to have in your arsenal of assets that you mastered. Um, that you can trade and right you need to also know how it relates to other metals copper silver gold gold especially gold gold continued falling give me a second right that's beautiful right so you'll see here on the daily time frame Right, I said any buys here on the first red box are going to be smoked. I literally said, and I even drew a, a cross on top of uh, a string of buy lows, you know, you know, swing trade buy lows here. And I, I said, no, I canceled it. I said, this is not going to work. Um, and you can see markets came in here, bled through the first demand, made contact with the second demand. That's what price is bouncing to. But I think that's in deep search for a supply. So this potentially could happen. Right, so just be very mindful of that. I am not long on gold for any reason right now. Um, um, and I think it's just crazy to be right. Euro pound, you guys remember, I told you guys last week that I was in good profits for Euro pound, but never got the chance to close and markets reversed, never got the chances to close and then eventually figured out um, um, what was going on because I was, yeah, it was too late now by the time I figured it out, right? So, so, I, there was a sell point here, made a bit of money, but then got stopped out. Then I broke even, and then one one of the trades actually made a little bit of money, but was I stopped? I got what's it called profit trading, right? I was profit trading with my stop loss, right? And then thing, right? And then here, when markets got here, I was not in this, right? So we covered this in the last war room when I was looking at the charts where I got stopped out at, right? But since then, since we last spoke about this on Sunday, guys, last week Sunday, right? Markets have done something very interesting, right? We've got a clean drop and then a new uh, you know development right so what i want to do on this chart now is to add my pending orders now that markets have kind of like given a much more clear understanding of what's going on i'm going to have a pending order there and a pending order up there and then a pending order here 
and a pen in order here. And then we shall see, we shall see. But obviously I, I, I would very much prefer, let me just remove this out of the way. I would very much prefer, and this one is very dangerous, right? I would very much prefer a scenario where price actually just comes to the higher supply. And then again, as usual, try and hold all the way down there. I want this to be a very good money maker. So all the way back to a, a governing demand because there is none on this chart. So Euro pound, I know I'm going fast through the charts today. Euro pound, we really want to, you know, maintain some, some type of, you know, cordiality in a, like, 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 like in these areas here, some type of open friendliness where we are mindful of our stop losses, mindful of our risk management. But also mindful of these, you know, supplies that are slightly lower, right? I wanna, I wanna avoid those. Um, and if price leaves without me, then so be it. Haven't looked at silver in a long time. Got out of silver a long time ago, and it seems like we're still waiting for a new entry. It seems like we are still waiting for a new entry on silver, and it's moving a little bit slower than we want right now. Be very mindful of this situation here. Right on the weekly time frame, it almost feels like there's nowhere else to wait but all the way up there. Right on the weekly time frame, it literally feels like there's nowhere else to wait but all the way up there. So that's what we're going to do on the daily time frame. That looks like exactly how this chart is drawn up here. So I'll be watching this this week, hoping you can make it home and then we can, you know, continue the downside. Right. So that's silver for you. I've done that. I've done euro pound. I've done that. The next chart I did a a blog post on USD Czar. I did a blog post on USD Czar on my private 365 page. I'm just talking about a couple of things. I look at that relation to the Bridge and Golf and pattern on Friday is how markets close. I don't like this, hey? I wasn't sure what to do. Then I realized, nah, I don't have to trade it. I don't have to trade this at all. I absolutely am not that desperate to take a trade that looks like that, right? So because of that, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's realistic to say the exchange in South Africa is going to come back to 1 is to 14. I'm struggling to see that myself, um, but you know, only time will tell. But if this is a, a good place to bounce from, right, then definitely markets could go a little bit up. Markets currently testing the 16 rand, 16 cents to 16 rands, 54 cents um, 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 in the exchange against the dollar, uh, which is marked by these two red lines here. And we shall see if they hold, right? Potentially, if that dollar strength comes back, and, and, and it will. Right, uh, I don't know when, but if it does come back, then this will be. So the question is, how quick and when can we eat, you know, from the from the dollar weakness that's currently presenting itself right now, right? But I don't trust this level, so just be mindful of that. Right, instead of next, we've got Euro USD, the all-time retail favorite, the top, top, top most liquid chart in the world. Right, Euro USD, right, still moving up and down. I told you guys, don't sell here, cowboy area, right? So, you really want to try to put, you know, um, some pinning orders up there, but just be mindful, right? What's going on here? Be very mindful. Um, for those of you who are into this, you know, trading, be very mindful of any type of schematic prints here, um, because this will take time, right? But you can see here, uh, you know, Euro USD up on a climb. You know, climb direction. You can see also how close they are to this uh, particular, you know, uh, order block of value add. You know, there's a monthly governor, how close price is to crossing over, right? To breaking that supply and then just to falling into no man's land um, is an interesting thing to see the Euro USD do, which means to say any rallies in Euro USD will be sold. That's how I truly feel. And the last chart, ladies and gentlemen, as promised, is oil. I hope you guys enjoyed today's war room. I know I spent a lot of time talking, then I, I did kind of like speed through these assets, but we have marked these out for the most part. So there's nothing too crazy going on here. Right, oil is at an all-time high, guys. Do you do you, can you imagine if they break this all-time highs? It's literally signing like a war against basic commodities. It's literally saying all those people in the world can die. We're just gonna increase the price of gas and, and oil and, and all sorts of things. And I wonder if that's possible, right? But this governing supply, smart prices arrived at it for the very first time, right? Uh, at about one, two, so this is about a couple of days ago.
right there. Okay, one. I'm sorry about that. I was just kind of double checking, right? Rare break of market structure. Yeah, look. So, so if oil hits the supply, where is it going? Because it has hit the supply, but right now we've got market inefficiencies. You see this here? We've got this long wick slowly being filled for the last two months, right? Ah, the war is almost over in March. Now it's not. Here comes April. Price of oil goes up. May. Price of oil goes up, right? My oil keeps kind of like, and I know there are a lot of call options that are due to expire around about the, you know, soonish or later, whatever, but the mark was about 150, right? So, so there's still a high chance that this thing could be open. But if, if, if we do break this, guys, you have to ask yourself, what does it mean? Like, you know, oil is really expensive. The most expensive oil has ever been in the world, according to the chart, is roughly about, you know, 148 US dollars per barrel, right? Just want to make sure I'm correct. Yeah, I am, right? 148 US dollars per barrel. And today, oil is trading just, uh, you know, you know, b b under that, right? So, come on, man. Let me just, I'll just give you the price. Right, so oil right now is roughly around about 110, right? So about $30 away from all-time high. So I'm saying that it's, it's quite realistic that might oil might break this, right? But for the meantime, I do see, I do believe that we're going to receive some mid-term to short-term downside. Like if you're looking at the weekly time frame, you'll see that why, why downside theory? Because price of the supply, simple. You just keep keep your trading simple. Well, when markets get to a supply, they fall. When they go to a demand, they go up. You need, all you need to do is to take the course and learn the different types of supplies and demand. But when markets get to a supply, there are rules of the different types. But in general, they fall. When they get to demands, there are rules. But in general, they go up, right? And now, mark price means like you know weekly rates for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. About eleven weeks, oil has been kind of like trading more sideways, right? And I do think. This accumulation might be to the upside, but that's like a 10% chance. And most likely we're going to see a 10, uh, you know, a 90%, uh, uh, you know, you know, odds reality coming true of price breaking down to the downside, um, you know, to, to almost some, some pre-normalized levels, right, before the drama, right? Um, I mean, this is all a big contributor to recession. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I thoroughly thank you so much for sticking around to 365 I, I i absolutely absolutely you know you know would encourage you to check out our 365 trading academy course link down below 50 percent off up until the first of june and then things change after that become a consistent profitable trader become serious about your trading right and then move with us move some of you have this information some of you come to war rooms. i just don't know I know for a fact I am not the biggest influence in your life during the week. What happens during the week, trader? You have to have a good trading journal to tell you what your weeks are like, to tell you what you need to change about the, 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 your, your trading. You can't come to war rooms, get good direction. Week after week, markets go in that direction or we're just waiting. One of the two. We've never had a week after week we're in a loss. Never. Not that we're always right, and it's, it's difficult to say these truths without sounding scammy, but I, I can't help it. I, it's my strategy. It works that well. And it's not by design by Nero. It's just smart money. If you do what the banks are doing, they don't want to lose. They want to you know, maximize as much as they can. Are you in a better place? So, so figure out what's going on with your life. If you've already done the course, and then figure out what needs to change. What's your routine? Remember, every day, in every way, you are getting better and better as a trader. I shared my full affirmations with the whole world. I don't know who's using it, but I was so blessed to see someone send me a picture. They wrote it on their own whiteboard, you know, wherever they are. And that was encouraging, the power of one. So every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better as a trader. Because of that, I am so helpful, happy and grateful that money comes to me in increasing frequent quantities on a continuous basis. I am saying my affirmation out loud with you towards the end of this video. If you're confused on what's going on and you're new to the channel, subscribe and get a dose of this. This is my trader's affirmations. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better as a trader. Because of that, I am so happy and grateful that money comes to me in increasing frequent quantities on a continuous basis. I have to tell myself that. It's not that I'm going to go work hard for it. It's first of all, I have to believe it. I believe this is true because it has already happened. I have once upon a time in my life 
seen this happen. I am still alive today. It's happening. I have a roof over my head. I had breakfast. I, there are signs in my life that things can only get better. No matter how bad things have been, there are signs that onwards and forwards. So that is why I believe that money will keep coming to me frequently. I am grateful and thankful for everything in my life. Money is forever circulating freely in my life and there is always a divine surplus. I am prospering every day. I am growing in wealth and in wisdom every day. Every day my wealth is multiplying. I and my family are advancing and growing and moving forward financially. I will have, my number is 700, 400, 743,500 US dollars by the end of 25 December 2022. That number works out to about 11 million rands from my personal trading, not from my corporate accounts. Corporate accounts is easy. Mm -hmm. Let me not say easy. The corporate accounts is different because the capital is just big. But the, um, I want to have 743,500 US dollars by the end of this year from the trading signals I'm giving you guys here in the war rooms. I just had a, a euphoria stage right now. I took profits on all those industry trade calls that I gave you. It put me closer to that. I closed a 43,000 US dollar trade call on Zoom at the big earlier on during the year. It got me closer to that. I, 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 I did very well with my USD CAD trade. There are a couple of trades that were already closed that are already pushing me close to my goal. All right. God is the source of my supply or my financial and other needs are met at every moment of time, point, and space. There is always a divine surplus. I tell myself about the divine surplus all the time. I can tell I'm catching a cold. So I, if, my, if my psyche can understand that there's something bigger than me, that knows better than me, then I can calm my trading psychology. If my mindset truly believes it is not up to me, it is not only because of me, but there is actually a divine surplus that my family will never lack. And I can focus my vibration towards that. I can focus my belief pattern towards that. It calms my trading. It means that even if I have a bad trading cluster and I lose 15 trades, 10 trades, and I have a bad trading cluster, my overall belief in my overall goal is not shaken. That's why in the last five minutes, in the first three paragraphs of my affirmations card, I have brought up that there is a divine surplus. I continue. I am married to wealth. I am one with wealth. God is my pilot. He leads me. He prospers me. He is my counselor. I am the best and continuing to be the best financial markets educator in Africa. I am becoming the best financial markets trader and investor, consistently profitable in the forex market, derivatives market, options market, futures market, stock market, and the crypto market. I will get my 743,500 US dollars on or before Christmas day of December, 2022 through trading and all things financial markets related. By the 25th of December, I will have in my possession 743,500 US dollars which will come to me in various amounts from time to time. That's the trick. I don't want some manifestation, the secret weird voodoo miracle where someone just gives me this money in my laps. No, 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 no. It's going to start right now. I am building those portfolios. I am building the account. I'm making the withdrawals. Then I'm investing the 10%. I'm making smart plays on the money I'm making throughout because according to my affirmation, I will have it. I will have it in various amounts from time to time during the interim. And there's now Napoleon Hill in chapter two of Think and Grow Rich said, nothing worth something is for free. If I am asking the universe for 743,500 US dollars by December, I must pay the costs. The costs of what I want must equal to what I want to get. And what I want in, 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 in return for this money, as my affirmation continues, in return for this money, the cost of this money, I will become the most efficient trader. I have to pay the price. I must become efficient. I must understand my trading strategy. I must master my trading strategy. I cannot expect money from the market with a poor trading strategy. So number one, I'll become an efficient trader. Number two, I'll become the most disciplined trader. I will stick to my trading plan. I will only plan the trades and then trade the plan and plan and trade nothing else. A rule-based trader. That's rule number three. This is everything that we teach you in 365. This is the entire course. 
efficient trading strategy, a disciplined trader, a rule-based trader, so that I am capable of rendering the only way to get the seven, four, three, five hundred. And I'll tell you how I got to this number. It's always 10% more than I made the previous year. That's how I get to this number. The number has to be realistic to your belief system. You can't say, I want a million US dollars from the financial markets. It's my affirmation. I'm going to get it. If you have not built a base of being consistent with the hundred dollars, it's a subconscious mind that you're programmed. You're not trying to create a, 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 a magic lamp. All right. So my amounts are always based on a 10 to 15% increment based on my performance on the previous year on my personal war room account. All right, simple maths. Now, as I continue and conclude in my affirmations card with you, for those who are still listening, God bless you. I, 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 in return for this money, I'll become the most efficient trader, the most disciplined trader, the most rule-based trader, so that I am capable of rendering the fullest possible quantity and quality of trades in my capacity as a trader. One more time, Leroy, I believe that I will have this money in my position. My faith is so strong. I can now see this money. I can feel it. It is now a weight and transfer to me at the time and in the proportion that I make my trades. The surplus, the supply is unlimited. I am grateful for everything that I have. If you're still watching this video, please, please, right now, please go to the comment section and say visualization. Just type visualization and I'll know. I'll know you're still with me. I just need at least, I need everyone who's still here. So I know you're still with me. Now, here's what you don't know about affirmation cards. We're, we're bringing back the podcast, or the, the, the podcast, the podcast. Oh my goodness. I'm bringing back the podcast. That's what I'm trying to say. And in the podcast, we'll talk about these things. It's all in Dr. Murphy's book, the book we stopped reading earlier on. Affirmation cards are great, but I then spend. 30 minutes of part of my morning routine visualizing this. I visualize my war. I visualize me saying, welcome to another war room 365. This is your head trader, Lira, my series. And I was right again. Did you see I told you ABC? I was right again. I visualize it. I visualize seeing me in December saying, guys, I told you, I told you I was going to make this amount of money in general. I told you, I told you. Now it's December. Look at my withdrawal slips. Look at the balance. I'm going to do that again this December. I am going to, I, I see myself there. This points up my belief system. It reaffirms my affirmation and it helps my subconscious mind focus on the things it needs to. Number one, becoming an efficient trader, disciplined trader, rule-based trader. If I can become these three things, I will get to my goal. If you got to the end of this video and you learned about visualizing, I'll teach more on this. I just want to know if anyone is interested. Write it down on the comment section. I appreciate you for real, for real. God bless you. Have a brilliant week. Make your money. Be smart. And be smart means operate at strict levels of understanding in the markets. Understand what is going on. It is better than going in blindly. If you want to buy, know when to get out. If you want to sell, get in and hold. 365, shake my hand. Peace.